whenever we go to a, a client's place and we ask the quality team about uh, seven qc tools i find many of the quality professionals they are not aware of the quality tools or or they don't know in which situation i should use use which tool so that uh, knowledge is not there so in this particular video we are going to learn about seven quality tools and also more specifically where exactly i have to use the tool how should we use these tools to solve our quality issues that's what we are going to learn come let's get started hi there this is anant your trusted lean manufacturing consultant and in this video we are going to learn about seven qc tools and how it can be used so what are these seven quality tools the seven quality tools are uh, seven tools which are actually put together by you know a japanese uh, professor uh, koru ishikawa and it was widely used in japanese uh, industrial training programs i am talking about 70s and you know uh, late 60s and 70s where you know the japanese companies they started implementing toyota production system and also they started focusing more on this quality you know uh, initiatives so at that time uh, professor ishikawa he is the person who consolidated this seven uh, tools and he made it as a package and it was covered in the japanese industrial training programs and the goal was to implement basic user friendly tools that workers from all the levels they can you know easily understand and they can start practicing it in their day to day operations and uh, today the seven qc tools are used widely in many companies right in six sigma methodology tqm continuous improvement all these methodologies they they all use this uh qc tools in one way or the other right so come let's get started so the first uh tool is check sheet a check sheet is a basic tool which will collect qualitative or quantitative data whenever it used it is used to collect a quantitative data we can call it as a tally sheet also in some companies they do uh, call it as a tally sheet so it is just a form of a tick mark or a check mark or indicates how many times a particular activity has been done or how many times a particular issue has been found out uh, and uh, the moment you start you know consolidating or taking all this data it it will help in taking it to the next level right so so a check sheet is a way to collect data that is the first uh, point and uh, with this it is very simple to set up and easy to read graphics and check sheets are very very uh, user friendly uh, tool to collect the data and uh, for example in this particular example i have shown uh, a, a check sheet where the weight starts from 98 then it goes to 98.25 98.5 etc and up to 102 and uh, the idea is to uh, mark how many you know instances the idea is to mark the weight of the each uh, package right so every time a particular you know uh, weight is measured we are going to put a tick mark or a check mark in that particular uh, against that row right so if you see 100 is your uh, required you know the customer specification is 100 so uh there is a lot of check marks there 23 and then 99.75 has 17 instances 99.5 has 8 instances like that so this means this particular check sheet has been you no know, i mean a person is able to collect the data and he is marking it in the check sheet so this is how it is marked in a typical you know uh, shop floor so this is the first tool of the seven qc tools next we can look at a histogram so what is a histogram a histogram is a way to represent this data in a visual format so that we can find out the uh, top defect or i would say you no know, a pattern you no know, is there a pattern you no know, in the uh, data that's what you no know, a histogram is useful for understanding so the histogram can help you represent the frequency distribution of data clearly and concisely among different groups of the sample allowing us to quickly and easily identify the areas for improvement right. it and what is the difference between a bar chart and a histogram bar chart can be uh, not not continuous data or discrete data for example you can draw a bar chart with you no know, four different regions for example north south west east but a histogram is a representation of a continuous data with a particular specific uh, interval for example you can say data from 5 to 10 is in this bar and 10 to 15 will be in the next bar 15 to 20 so it's a continuous data which is represented in a histogram histograms are useful when uh, for breaking the frequency of the data and into categories such as age you know days of the week physical measurements and any other category can be listed in this uh, histogram so histogram is a visual it's similar to bar chart but it helps in 
visualizing the data and understanding where exactly the high frequency is right so that is the use of histogram the third tool is called pareto charts pareto chart in simple terms people also call it as 80 20 rule right and uh, the rule assumes that in any process 80 percentage of the process or the systems problems are caused by 20 percentage of the major factors other defects right uh, in in simple words is like vital few and trivial many so the vital few reasons that 20 percentage of the defects cause 80 percentage of the problems right and the remaining 20 percentage of the problems are caused by 80 percentage of the defects so it's a pareto chart is a, a way to visually uh, d- describe the pareto analysis so in a pareto chart it's a combination of bar chart as well as a line chart right and uh, here we can easily say the top you no know, few defects the top 3 or top 4 parameters contributing to more than 80 percentage of the uh, defects the pareto chart is useful in identifying the top reasons or top causes of your uh, issues the goal of the pareto chart is to highlight the relative importance of a variety of parameters allowing you to identify and focus your efforts on the vital few right the biggest impact you know the the causes or the defects which creates the biggest impact that's what we can easily identify through a pareto chart so this is the third tool okay next we are moving to the fishbone diagram fishbone diagram is invented or introduced by toro ishikawa himself and this particular diagram helps in identifying the various factors leading to the effect for example it looks like a fishbone right the head of the fish can be the problem and then there are different branches right in this particular example i have given six branches so the people process equipment then materials environment management all these major six branches looks like a fish bone that's why it's called as a fish bone diagram right and in each branch we can also create sub branches like what are the next level you no know, issues for example there is a let us take there is a problem of you no know, blow hole in a casting right so the uh, casting has a blow hole so the reasons can be many and if let us say one of the reasons people are you know uh, saying is okay lack of training to the operators right so under people it can be a sub branch saying okay lack of training right and uh, like that process can be different you no know? in under process there can be the temperature of the liquid is different right it is less than the specified temperature so that can be one reason so all the reasons the probable causes for this particular defect can be categorized into six major branches and in that six major branches you can also have the sub branches right and the moment you have classified into different branches you will be able to take some trials for example if it is a process related you can slowly take one by one as a trial one by one reason you can focus and do change it and then you can see whether the results are changing and you no know, this fishbone diagram will help you in identifying or categorizing this data into different branches so that you can take the trials next so and the fifth one is called scatter diagram a scatter diagram is useful for depicting the relationship between two variables for example if i am changing this particular parameter what is the result for example if i am changing the temperature right i am increasing the temperature to 5 degree is there a change in the process you know result there is a correlation between two variables this scatter diagram will help you in identifying the relationship between these two variables this is actually done in a graphical manner like x is one parameter and another one is par- uh, y parameter for example in drawing we have given the amount of discount given in the newspaper you no know, uh, value and what is the increase in the subscription uh, number of people reading it right so if i give the uh, discount of up to 5 percentage there is an increase of re- uh, no purchase like 5 to 10 10 percentage if i increase the discount to 10 percentage again it goes to 12 percentage so there is a positive correlation so if i increase the discount the sales is also increasing so now i can find out there is a relationship between these two like this you can find out the relationship between two variables using a scatter diagram and the next tool is control charts or schwart chart this control charts can help quality assurance professionals determine whether a process is stable and predictable making it easy for you to identify the factors that may lead to variation a control charts use a central line right to depict an average as well as an upper and lower line right to depict the upper control limit and the lower control limit and then when we plot the you no know, values if any value goes above the upper control value or the lower control value 
goes below the lower control value then we say okay the process is not so stable right so uh, this is called as a control chart and then the seventh tool is called as a flow charts flow charts are mostly used in uh, documenting the results right uh, showing the progress right uh, uh, showing organization structures and process flow making the uh, audience easy to understand what we are trying to tell them and uh, mapping the current process can help you to effectively pinpoint which activities are completed and by whom etc and the, how process flows from one department to another department that can be easily given by a flow chart so this is the seventh tool which is uh, under this seven qc tools so these are all the seven qc tools but there is a way to use these quality tools when we are facing with the quality problem right the first step will be i today i have 10 different quality issues right i have 10 different quality issues which you want to focus first so which tool you will use you will first select the vital few that is that defects which are giving the maximum uh, impact right most of my uh, defectives are coming from the top two or three defects so parrot analysis will help me in identifying the top two, top three defects so i will select the let us say the top defect the number one defect now for this number one defect what are the major probable causes so i will do a brainstorming activity and i will list down all the probable causes now i will use a fish bone diagram to take all these probable causes and fix it in different branches the second step is doing the fish bone diagram right and now i have the different branches so i am now selecting one particular branch to do the trials right so i have taken one particular you know activity and i am starting to do the trials now we'll start collecting the data using a check sheet so the third tool i will use is check sheet once i collect the data using a check sheet i go to the fourth step of you know either plotting the a uh, value in a control chart or i can use a histogram or i can use a scatter, scatter plot right i will be able to understand the impact of my trial and based on that right we can find out the results so this is how a uh, seven qc tools will help in identifying the problem and solving the issue right and in some cases we also bring in this yy analysis right when i do a small change in you know a parameter a what is the result right there is a scatter diagram here and if i want to learn more if i want to go in depth to find the root cause what i will do i will use a yy analysis which is generally not covered in the seven qc tools but it's a separate tool so in that yy analysis we will go okay why this particular has happened next again why this particular thing has happened like that we go to five ys and we'll find out the root cause but the seven qc tools if it is used properly we will be able to solve a lot of quality issues in our company today in most of the companies people use uh, seven qc tools to identify the top defects collect data analyze the results and also taking corrective and preventive action so i hope this particular video is very useful for you so thank you very much for watching this video if you are interested in fast tracking your career you no know, improve your career in manufacturing you can consider joining our lean master course and manufacturing leadership program very very useful program where you will learn a lot and you will be able to provide more inputs to your team members and grow faster in your organization all you need to do is just 30 minutes per day for 30 days and you will be able to complete the course and uh, today we have priced it in a very very aggressive manner right just 999 rupees per course so it will be very useful for you so please consider joining this course i have given the link in the description so thank you very much for watching i'll talk to you in the next video see you bye bye